That was an interesting way of escaping the room. I liked that. Aside from the fact that I had to double click it, bullshit, I had to do that a couple times in that segment. Um, that was cool. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus left out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. Normally, I split these segments up randomly, but I have a feeling I just ended a part, so this is the beginning of a new part. So, hey, everybody. So, comment question of the day, and I gotta pick up my controller story segment. Um, what's my comment question? Let's just go forward a little bit. All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body, body felt weak. Um, oh! <laughs> okay, sure, last time I did superheroes, let's do superpowers. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, I'm a pansy, so I'd have the power to regenerate. And, uh, anytime, like, anything, if I got, like, a serious wound, or even a fatal wound, I can regenerate that. He inhaled gulps of clean air, and with each one, he could feel his body begin to calm down. Alright, let's go. Actually, let me know your favorite, and maybe that is different from what you have yourself if you're a pansy, because I'm a pansy. One thing I do think that's really cool about, uh, one, one really cool superpower is laser vision. That'd be cool. But, um, uh, what I have for myself is definitely regeneration, because I'm a pansy. They all to each other and started off down the hallway. For a long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Soon, they had tried all the doors but one. The final door sat in the corner of the hallway. Uh-oh, looks like we're probably going to be cutting a bunch of stuff out now. We're at that time, right? We're meeting up. Jimpei grabbed the door handle and was about to, about to pull it open when... A voice cried out behind him, It's June. Neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. There was no doubt the voice belonged to... Jumpy! That's wrong, it belonged to June, not Jumpy. He spun around. There, at the other end of the hallway, Jumpe saw human fingers running, figures running toward him, specifically a woman, at high pace, and she jumped on him. Look at them. June Santa and Seven. They stopped short in front of Jumpe and his companions, gasping for air. Hey! What are you guys doing here? What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Um, guys, could you come over here? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. Map. Map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck in the upper left corner. Most likely, they assumed, it was a map for the floor they were on. Door 7 and... Door 8 and 3 as well. Map confirmed what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallway where they had found themselves. In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? Until we find that 9 doors, here ain't gonna split us up. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we can't open door 9. That's how the Norway game works. Jippy looked at the map of the ship's interior again. Whew! And as he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. As one, they moved back toward the door, which had only a moment ago been ready to open. Hey, Ace, what's up? You sleep good? He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. Six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? Gonna open it. Ready or not, here we come. Nodded the silent ascent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. What do we got? I know what we got. That's a lie. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. We found a couple keys. The key? Ain't that what I said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Here. Seven tossed something small and metallic toward Jimpe. He caught it and found the object was a key. On it, someone had engraved a symbol very similar to a four. He looked at it 
You looked over at June, who nodded back. It had to be the Jupiter symbol. I'm gonna let you hold on to that, alright? Yeah, I got it. Well, I've got something for you too, then. Here. It's the Saturn keycard. We found it in the kitchen. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. And with that, she pressed it into Jopei's hand. Success? Question mark? But slightly less than honored. As a group, they now had three keys that had not been used. The Earth key, which had been found in the laboratory. The Jupiter key, which Seven had just handed to Jumpat. The Saturn key card, which Lotus had just handed to Jumpat. And so that was exactly what we expected to see in the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom, with a massive central staircase. Great, back to the beginning. Sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Well, we already researched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. No idea! Let's be stupid! Hooray! Hooray for stupidity! Yeah, that's a good question. Trip, I looked off into the distance thoughtfully. Lord side and shook her head. Bunch of morons. You guys followed me here, but you didn't even know why? You have big breasts, what can I say? Jippe, you've got the solar system keys, don't you? He did. He pulled them out. Saturn key card. The Earth key. Jippe didn't see what they had to do with anything, though. Both he and Santa were completely lost. Fortunately, June took pity on them. Don't you remember the elevator? On sea deck where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on A-deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So, the two keys the Jumpy has should let us use the elevator and the door in the A-deck, huh? Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. Alright, I got it. Let's get started, then. Hooray! Elevator rides! My favorite kind! It opened! Look, Jumpy! A thing happens when I press a button? No way! Jude's voice was excited, but Jumpy could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened! Let's get going! He grinned at June and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Well, wait. What? Uh, I'm not really... Uh, I just... Oh, my gosh. Jumpy, I think was that something at a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? She was probably afraid of... Being locked up alone with a boy. After a little thought, Jumpy decided that she had to be nervous about being locked up in such a small space alone with a boy. In a way, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. I don't know if I pronounced that correct. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least, they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Jibbe couldn't help but think how innocent she was. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. And again, he felt herself restrained. Himself restrained. Herself? Jibbe is not herself. I said, wait a minute! Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I've never, you know... She'd never been in an elevator with a man alone before. Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might get wet. What? You think I'm gonna jizz on you or something? <laughs> Down there, I get soaking wet. Oh, well, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> that that's true. You don't mind? Mind what? Getting wet. Well, well, I don't think I'd probably, you know, like it. 
gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. Really? I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? <laughs> this is so stupid! What happens, happens, right? If you get the chance, you gotta go for it! That's what a man's supposed to do! I guess! You're so cool, Jumpy! <laughs> oh my god! This is the best thing! Oh. <laughs> I wonder how long it takes before they realize that they're talking about different things! I really admire you! Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I'm really scared. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. So I don't think I'll be able to last very long. And then it'll be over. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> I very rarely laugh out loud. Even when I'm recording, I'll laugh in my head. But I don't laugh out loud. That was a genuine laugh out loud. Oh my god. Over? Yes. I'll go to heaven. Well, what? Heaven? It feels kind of like you're floating in space and your mind gets all fuzzy, like when you pass out. At least that's what I've heard from people who've experienced it. Uh, yeah, I've heard something like that. <laughs> How long is this going to go on for? <laughs> My voice just keeps, like, cracking, if that's what you call it. Ugh. Although I don't think the same thing happens to guys. What? Huh? But it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Well, I mean, usually it doesn't go inside the man. I mean, generally, yeah, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. <laughs> Your body will force you to swallow some of it eventually. What are you trying to do with me? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction <laughs> to what you're experiencing. Was, was that really how it happened? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! Sexy time! That's this video! That's what this video is called. Or something stupid like, um, misunderstandings to the max? Misunderstandings to the sex? I don't know. Oh my god. I wanted to move forward with the plot, but this is too good. Oh my gosh. Oh! It occurred to Junpei that perhaps that was how it worked. Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years! <laughs> I can't help it! This is so good! This is too good! Oh my god! How do you misunderstand life so gravely? Oh, my voice! Calm down, Junpei! Calm down, me! Oh! The thought terrified him! June seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or even 10 minutes. Hold my breath? Do I have to? Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. And now the truth comes out. It's about freaking time! But once that happens, you won't be able to get oxygen anymore. And you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. <laughs> oh, I've done enough laughing. I'm done laughing. No more laughing for the rest of the year. <laughs> I did my laughing. I'm good. No more laughing. You can just imagine it. Finally, Junpei understood. He understood what June was trying to say and why she was so scared. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't last very long. See? She was afraid the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen elevators in the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which means that the elevator could only convey them to lower decks. My face hurts a little. It's like, 
it's in like a, you know that how yeah, that thing where you're smiling too much or laughing too much, your face starts to hurt. That happened to me. Ugh. He was so surprised by Junlei, he didn't even have time to think about what, what awaited him on the E deck. The elevator stopped and the door slid open. They stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business or jellyfish going about their jellyfishy business. There was, however, a blowfish going about its blowfishy business, or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were popped out and her mouth a tiny, intense brown. Hmm. I'll knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around nervously, then... Exhale. Ah. You're right. It's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Jip, I thought about that for a moment. Well, we'd probably get really wet. Up there. Huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can. Once we're done looking around down here. The joke continues. This is... Lois and Sano might already be back. Okay. Good idea. If they glanced around the room, they found themselves soon. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. You know what's funky? The nine doors on the other side of that. So close, yet so far. In fact, actually, it's not that far. So close, yet kind of far. Well, we can't get over there. Right. And perhaps... In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Jinpei found an opening. He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. On the way back, Jinpei noticed a map on the wall. We still don't know what this map is about, do we? As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for E-Deck. Yeah, it's like he takes it, and then we don't even get to see anything with it. Like, there's gotta be something going on with that, at least in one pathway. Ugh, smells horrible. Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even Santa pinched his nose shut. Yeah, this is pretty awful. I feel like I'm gonna puke. It was just as bad as they said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air, so thick that they could almost taste it. It was sour, and smelled of fish, feces, and burnt meat. The best combination. It worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat to pound against the entrance to his stomach. He put his hands over his mouth and struggled to keep what little was in his stomach where it belonged. So what's going to happen now? Because I already know that he has the prosthetic arm, right? Like, am I going to realize right away? Am I going to tell everyone else? Like, what's going to happen? And there are those damn initials again that mean something. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There was uh, blood everywhere. A few arms of the splatter reaching toward them as they walked in through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radial arms to their source. The body itself was hidden behind the divider. June, you should stay here. But, please just do me a favor, okay? Alright? He didn't give her a chance to say no. He put his hand on his shoulder as if to shove her into the ground like a tent pole. Turned and walked toward the end of the divider. It felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. Santa and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. Junpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the body like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast ragged hole had been torn in the torso. What remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Yum. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall, become stuck there as they dried. Glo Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. Just like Ace said. Santa's voice was strange. Jumpy suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. 
the detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. Looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his Yulna. But you already know that he has a prosthetic left arm. Realize this, Junpei. Don't be stupid. Please. His bracelet lay next to him. God damn it. Why couldn't you have a Eureka moment? It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head had simply collapsed. So we can't even see the display? We can't even see his number? Like, who... Oh, man. And what's going on with this? This has got to be, like... This is a fake, for sure, but, like, what's going on with this fake? Like, who set it up here? Was it, like, from... Is this... I, I have no idea what could be going on with this. I really don't know. Maybe someone just took some random body that they were keeping hidden. Like, you know, apparently they had that captain all along, because he was up there on the upper deck. They took someone they maybe had been kept, like, for fresh dead people, and just exploded them? I don't know. Explodinated them? I have no idea. The blood coating almost made it look like the raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. If there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Doesn't seem reasonable that he would have killed Snake as well. Should they hadn't really considered that. If Zero had killed Snake, then Zero was on the ship with them. Was Zero still on the ship with them? Jopey wasn't sure. Be as stupid as possible. Success. I doubt it's gonna beat what happened last time I was stupid, though. He wasn't sure. Hey, I'm just wondering about one thing. And what's that? How can you be so sure that Zero's on this ship? Ace's eyebrows shot up. Really, Jopei? I confess, I'm a little disappointed. Usually you're rather sharp. Isn't it obvious? Obvious? How so? This ship. Huh? Zero said this ship several times when he, uh, addressed us. I am Zero, the captain of this ship. The purpose of this game is simple. Leave this ship alive. As you have noted surmise, this ship has begun to sink. If he weren't here, he would say this ship, would he? Well, he could. There's no things, nothing stopping him. He'd be saying something like, that ship, or the ship. Oh. I guess that makes sense. Ace's explanation made perfect sense. Trippin felt a little foolish that he hadn't seen it himself. Still, he was left with a question, and was one of no small importance. If Zero's on the ship, where is he? Suddenly, everyone went very quiet. The silence was cold and clammy, and Jippe could feel it crawling across his back and around his throat. Again, his head, he heard the ghosting, moaning noises. Vilva. Moments later, a person who looked more ghost than human appeared. It was Clover. She looked at the floor as she spoke, and her voice was a cold monotone. I think... I think Zero is one of us. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffled rustling of breath. Eyes darted from face to face. One of those faces was the face of their jailer. But who... Jumpe... Said... That's crazy! That's crazy! Isn't this ship gonna sink in a few hours? If Zero was here with us, he'd be putting himself in danger. Why the hell would he do something like that? Could just be a psycho. Masochist, even. Wait, Lois is a masochist. Of course! There's no motive. Clover looked up at Junpei and her face fell. You don't believe me? Her eyes were so pitiful. Wait... I mean, this happened, like, before, right? Nine years ago? Was Zero among you then? Just say so if it was. Like, if she, if it wasn't, if Zero wasn't among you, or you don't know, then well, you have no case. The moment Jinpei met them, he felt his heart tighten. He didn't think what he said was wrong, but perhaps the way he said it had been, had been wrong. He'd been too insensitive. Clover just lost her brother. No, she didn't! And you should realize, you know about the prosthetic, goddammit! His death would have been bad enough, but she'd also seen the blast of wreck of his body. Jopay barely knew him, and the sight had been enough to make him sick. What Clover had felt, he couldn't begin to imagine. In that mental state she must have been in, it was understandable that she would look at those around her with suspicion. She felt everyone was against her. The least Jopay could, could have done was try to understand what she was feeling. He felt ashamed of what he'd said. Perhaps, he thought, I should apologize. 
Put that in quotes if that's what he's thinking, you stupid narrator. Before that apology can begin... Boomer, I understand what you're feeling. You don't feel that you can trust any of us. Ace is beaten Junpei to the punch. As he spoke to Clover, his face was calm and friendly. But you have to understand, the more we distrust one another, the further we fall into our true foe's trap. Zero was the one who did those horrible things to your brother. Do you want to let yourself be manipulated by someone who would do such a horrible thing? Clover didn't answer. She didn't even look at Ace. The whole time, her eyes were on Junpei. He could feel Clover's eyes boring into him. Wow. They were the color of a deep winter lake. Junpei saw no suspicious in them, only, only sadness. Then, in that horrible silence... There the bell began to ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. There were seven of them all told. They were written on a paper pulled from Junpei's notebook, and each one bore a code name and a door. Why had they decided to vote that way? They decided it wasn't fair to simply ask everyone at once. That would allow people to force others to go through certain doors. Well, that wasn't the only reason. Junpei had proposed the voting system because he had a maniacal plan! <laughs> and he had a plan. Well, that's what he just said. It wasn't a plan he wanted anyone catching window, however, so he did his best to act calm as he began to open and read the pieces of paper. The first one read, Ace requests door one. Yes, I do. Would you like me to explain why? No, we don't have the time for that, sorry. Let's keep going. He opened the second one. Next is Santa. He wants door six, because he's a fucking June stalker. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Jinpei continued with the third, fourth, and fifth pieces of paper. If I go into store door six, you're still gonna end up at door six, right? But I'm gonna like force ace in door six? That's one combination, there are a few others. Clover wants one, Lotus wants two, and Seven also wants two. Eh? Well, wait a minute! There's no way I'm going anywhere with that elephant of a man. No. There'd be no point to this voting if we let people change their votes because of stuff like that. But! Just give it up, Lotus. It's not like I want to hang out with some exhibitionist grandma either. I'm not an exhibitionist! I'm wearing clothes! Barely. So? Last I checked, that's not a crime. Maybe. What about common decency? Nobody wants to have to look at a chick who looks like a half-naked raisin. Grrr! I'm gonna kill you! Really? What? I, I still don't get why you joke about shit like that. I think you're joking. Maybe you're just too weak to do anything about it. Lois's hair flared out like the mane of an angry lion. She roared with a voice that shook the walls. Then again, the, uh, what was it? The wings and staff of Hermes. Maybe you're not joking. Maybe Santa just beat you to the punch of being evil! <laughs> with some difficulty, Ace managed to restrain her. Maybe all of us have an evil plan, and Santa just got his first. I don't know. Junpei, read the rest! Uh, alright. Junpei tore his eyes away and looked down at the sixth piece of paper. Maybe the whole, like, message of the game is to show the evilness of humanity and how we can all break down. I don't know. He opened it. Junpei wants door six. Yes. I don't really have a reason, I just felt like it. All the papers save Junpei's have been read. He did some quick calculations in his head. People who read requested door 1, Ace plus Clover. This was the door on A deck near the central staircase. People who requested door 2, 7 plus Lotus. This is the door on the bottom deck. This can be reached by taking the elevator to the bottom of the ship. People who requested door 6, Santa plus June. This was the door on E deck and could be reached by taking the elevator near the central staircase down. It took him less than a second to run the numbers. He opened the seventh piece of paper and spoke. Okay, the last one's mine. I want to go through door 6. Let's go! I want to go through door 6. Junpei flipped open the piece of paper. It read, Junpei, door six. Of course it did. He'd written it, after all. That's a problem. Jun spoke barely above a whisper, but they all knew what she'd said. Uh, what she'd said. Yeah, because, uh, June has a six and Santa has a three, that's a nine, plus ours gives us fourteen, which is five, but we add ace, that makes six. Um, and 
if that's how we're doing it, we can do it that way. Another way to do it is if I get to be with more ladies, um, Clover and me make a 9, and 9 plus your 6 is still a 6, so that's also an option. None of these teams will be able to go through the doors they want. Clover and I chose door 1. Lois and I chose door 2. Not enough people to open a numbered door, however. Digital routes don't match up either. We got similar problems. June, Junpei, and I want to go through door 6. But our digital route is 5. <clears throat> that kind of slipped into seven. Sorry. Same name, right? Same S's? We're gonna open the door. We need a one. Damn. What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Jippy crossed his arms and did his best to put his thoughts in order. The others followed suit, but with little result. Eventually, Clover broke the silence. Is she the math wizard of the group? Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one? With me. Grace was cold and flat, as was her voice, but her logic was sound. Seven and Lotus looked at each other. Seven plus eight plus four equals nineteen. One plus nine equals ten. Plus zero equals one. First problem resolved, they spoke up. What about me? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teams just complaining they didn't have a one? You mean I should join Santa's team? Clover nodded, her face still cold and emotionless. Her attitude and posture could not have been more different than the energetic girl of only a few hours before. No one seemed ready to contradict her. Her response was understandable, given the horrible situation in which she had been found herself, but even so... I understand. I will go through door six, then. If we do as Clover suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door. No one will be left behind. I kind of saw this coming. Um, like, one combination, again, is me, Clover, and June. But it makes more sense doing this because no matter what you do, Ace can't be with you in the first two doors, as far as I'm aware. Which means, of course, he's going to be with you in the third door. This, is... this seems to be the most reasonable solution. 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 plus equals 15. 1 plus 5 plus 6. 7, Lotus, what do you guys think? And this way, we're going to be with everyone once in this playthrough. I don't have a problem with it. Me either. Alright then, we're good to go. At last, Junpei and the other six had managed to separate themselves into two teams. Clover, Seven, and Lotus headed to the A deck where door one was, near the main staircase. Junpei, June, Ace, and Santa, however, took the elevator to E deck. Time to do it to it. The ride to E deck was a silent one. Alright, let's go! Santa's words jolted them to action, and they stepped out of the elevator into a long, straight hallway. I'm getting excited! Before long, they arrived in front of door six. One by one, they put their palms over the red. With a self electronic noise, it authenticated each one of them. doors open so come and play and all at once the four of them leapt through it